guys, you're gonna have to bend your knees more than us shorter guys, okay? Because here's what's happening. If he doesn't bend his, I'm like, he's gonna go right off balance, right? So he, taller guys gotta get really aggressive, get down. Okay, good. Do you, I would tell you, don't put your thumb up on the trigger guard. Oh my, my yep. index. That, if your thumb's up here, you can't truly lock your, lock this up. Because I'm having to do that. Gotcha. So try to wrap that underneath the perfect. And then press your thumb into that side part of the gun. Glocks have a little spot for some reason where you can just index your thumb onto. Okay? That thumb lays down on that thumb. Okay? Good. Good. And what you're going to do, guys, is you're not going to put that gun out in front of you and then bring your face down to the gun. You're not going to do that. You're going to be standing in this position. You're going to bring that gun up to your line of sight. Why would I do this? Right? You're going to bring that gun up to your line of sight to where you can see it. Not bring your face down to the gun. Roger that. So you're going to let that thumb come way up. This hand's going to come way up and try to touch this part of your hand right up there. You're going to press your thumb in. That thumb lays down on that thumb. Okay? And you're going to get your weight forward. Yep. Good. And you're going to bring the gun up to your line of sight. Is everybody here right eye or strong eye dominant? Yes. Right? Okay, good. Make sense? Yep. Okay, keep working on that. Yeah, I want you to get this part of your hand up higher onto the grip and then put your finger down and press it into that little spot right there. Lay that. Okay, now I'll be leaning forward. Good, that's good. Yeah, bring it right up to your, when you come out, make sure that you're pressing the gun out, focusing on that front sight. The front sight is your focus right now. Roger. So this thumb's gonna go way up, and then this hand is gonna take, take this part of your hand right here and press it in way up here. There you go, there you go, now point that. A little bit higher if you can, with your hand up here. Now, yeah, point that straight out like that and press it in right there. Good. If you can get it up a little higher, it'd even be better. There you go. So do this. Leave that hand on the gun. Take this hand off. Take this hand off. Point, point your thumb out there with this hand. Point it. Open your fingers up like this and point your thumb. Point your fingers down at the ground. Point these fingers down. Okay. Let that thumb come up. And then come in right like that. Now wrap your finger around. Perfect. Okay, so you're going to be leaning forward, right? Lean a little bit more forward. Good. Knees a little bit more bent, right? And your arms aren't going to be, there you go, there you go. Just, just, just relaxed a little bit from full extension. Okay, keep working on that. So we're going to take up the slack and we're going to press it through. Okay, let's do that again. Slack it out, press it through. Good. And we want to be using, guys, with our fingers on the trigger, as I come down the line and you start pulling the trigger, you want to use the middle of that first digit on that trigger. If you go all the way to the crease, you're going to end up pulling the shots low and down. If you don't put enough of that first segment on the trigger, you're going to pull everything to the right. So the middle of that first segment of your, of your trigger finger. Yep. Slack it out, press it. Okay, a little bit slower. Slack it out, press it through. Good. And when when you pull the trigger, take the trigger back. Don't pull it and let it off. That's a that's a weird thing that I see with everybody from deer rifles to shotguns. They pull the trigger and they let off on it. Pull the trigger and hold it back. Let the gun recoil. As the gun's recoiling, let your finger off the trigger and reset it. Right. I'm gonna pull it and we're gonna tape it back. Good. Because believe it or not, following through is going to aid in accuracy, right? Okay, keep working on that. Good. So again, we're going to take up the slack, and we're going to press it through, and we're going to hold that trigger back. We're going to let the gun recoil. It's going to recoil, and then we're going to let off, get a reset. So we're going to slack it back out again. And we're going to press it through again. Slack out, reset. And if it helps you to come all the way off the trigger. To engage your trigger to take the slack off, do that. Remember, if you're aiming at the target and you're taking the slack out and the gun goes off, that doesn't that doesn't doesn't matter at all because you're aiming at the target, right? 
Happens to me every once in a while. Be slacking up the trigger, and the gun will go off. It's all right. It's still a day hit. Right. So don't worry about that. If you're slacking up the trigger and the gun's pointed here, that's a bad thing. <laughs> right. Boom. That's a. That's a. I'm going to go to Dairy Queen that day. Right. DQ. Yes. Slack it out. Good. Good. Try to keep both those eyes open if you can. Okay. Press it. In. I want you to hold it back when it, when you do pull it. Let the gun reach and then put your finger off the trigger. Good. That that way you're following through. One more time. Good. I want this finger underneath with the other ones. This one. Yep. Because you can't point your thumb the way you need to point it if it's up on the that front first finger is up on the trigger guard. Okay. Good. That grip is perfect, Braden. Okay, now let's slack out the trigger. Press it through. Hold it. Good. Good again. Do not load your gun until I tell you. As I work the, down the line, starting with Victor, <clears throat> um, and I get to you, then we'll shoot. But right now, you can pull the gun out. What I want you to do, the first part of that target we're going to shoot is the number one. <clears throat> and as we do this, guys, I am not looking for speed. I do not want to hear pop, 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 pop. I want you to get every round into at least this circle. Really what you want to do is put every round in there. Now, those of you that have a gun that isn't your gun, it may, those sights may not be adjusted for your point of impact, right? That's okay. Keep aiming for this. If your group is right here, that's fine. I'm looking for tight groups. I'm not necessarily looking for all the rounds going in there unless your gun's really dialed in, your sights have been adjusted, right? I'm looking for, for repeatability, and I'm looking for tight groups. That tells me you're doing the same thing consistently over and over, consistent, right? That's what we want to be consistent. Go as slow as it takes to shoot really small groups, right? There's no, there's no speed, there's no timer going on right now. So go nice and slow, slack out your trigger, focus on your front sight, press it through, let the gun recoil, come back on target, front sight, slack out, press, come back on target, slack out, front sight, press. And I'm going to be telling you this ad nauseum. Okay. Everybody clear? Roger that. All right, Victor. Everybody got hearing protection and eye protection? Good. All right. Oh, those are cool, man. I didn't see those. Those are, those are cool. Like offset. I don't know. Yeah. If they're... That's cool. Yeah. I don't know if they're as nice as yeah, there. I've always done mine like this, so I, I just get in the same habit of once this magazine's gone, then my hand comes back to the next one. As that one's gone, it comes back yeah. to the next one. So right. that's the one thing I'm not sure how. I see guys with their mag pouches twisted so their magazine's like that. I'm like, really? what the heck? Oh. Makes no sense from an ergonomic standpoint. My hand falls right like that angle. And as it gets further back, it's more vertical. Yeah. All right. Okay. First, number one circle. I want you nice and slow. Let's, let's check. Keep, keep, go ahead and load it. I want you to go nice and slow. Aim at the same spot. Focus on the front sight. Slack out your trigger. Press it through. Take your time. Aim at the same point every time, no matter where the bullet goes. Sixty forty grip. Slack it out. Press it through. Good. Really grip. Sixty percent with this hand. Good. I think you're gripping a little bit too tight with your strong hand because I see the color change in your fingernail. Yeah. So try to grip a little bit more with that hand, less with that hand. It's a little counterintuitive. So let's go ahead and load you up and let's shoot. Remember, we're gonna bring the gun out, turn it right in front of us with, the, there you go. Yep, now bring it back this way, there you go. Yep, and guys, when we drop, when we rack the slide on these guns, we wanna let the full force of the spring, we wanna pull it back and let go of it, not ride it forward, because sometimes it won't go into battery. Roger that? Okay. 
All right, slack out, lean forward a little bit. There you go. Slack out your trigger and press it through. Let it surprise you, just like your rifle. Good. Now I want you to grip more with that hand. Get your hand up a little higher. There you go. Good. Really grip with that hand. Slack it out, press it through. Good. Same thing again, nice and slow. Good, take your time. Okay, take your time. Try to get them all in that spot. Lean forward. Okay, one more. Okay, magazine out. Okay, slide down. Hammer down, which means pull the trigger at the target. Okay, now you can dry fire practice with an empty gun. All right, good, take your time. Slack it out, press it through. Probably gripping it too tight. If you're tremoring, you're gripping it too tight. And that's okay. Just try to ease off a little bit, but just try to grip more with your weak hand, okay. right? Just like your little hammer. Slack it out, press it through. I'm letting off too fast. I need to let it go. Yeah, slow, hold right? the trigger back. Okay. Pull the trigger back, hold it, let it recoil, and then let off. Okay. That, trigger, that holster is not, yep, we want to be like this. There you go, so you can see it. There you go. Turn it sideways, right slide. Establish your grip. I want to see that thumb pointed just like that. Perfect. Lean forward, get aggressive. Slack out the trigger, press it through. Focus on the front sight. Look at that. Do the same thing again. Okay, slack it out, front sight press. Good, that was in the same first hole. Slack it out, take your time. Slack it out, press it through. Slack it out, press it through. Two more. See, see how your hand's separating? That means you're not gripping this enough because your hand's doing that. Mm -hmm. Right? If it was a 40 cal, I'd give it to you, but nines don't have enough recoil. <laughs> okay, unload it. Show me clear. Point that thumb out here, down right about there. Good. Get your fingers, get this, get this finger wrapped underneath that trigger guard. No? Like that. There you go. Now get this thumb up a little higher. There you go. Excellent. And really try to intermesh those fingers, right? So again, slack out, front side, press it through. Slack it out. It's all right, slack it out. All right, hold on one second. Hey, you grab my other gun. You're gonna look through the optic on the target. You're gonna look at the part of the target you wanna shoot and you're gonna let that optic go over that. We're gonna dry fire that gun a couple times. See the dot? What you want to do is bring it back here. Let's bring it back here. See the dot? Oh, it's a little tiny dot. Yeah. Okay. Press it out. Still see it? Yeah. Okay. Let's take it slack out and let's press it through. Get a little aggressive in your stance. Same thing. Slack it out. Press it through. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Magazine in. Okay, this gun's gonna have less recoil. And I want you to get your, that finger pointed. Really grip with that hand. Really focus on gripping. You get aggressive, get leaning forward because we wanna use the weight of our torso to help mitigate that recoil, right? Get even farther forward. There you go. All right, slack it out. Number two. Look at that. There you go. Slack it out. <laughs> nice. One more. One more. Okay, unload it. Now, what you just work with that gun, just dry firing it. We're going to spend some money. Exactly. Okay. Good job, man. All right. 
Guys, I want to see your group size decrease as we go through these circles, right? Think about your stance. Think about pressing the trigger. Think about balance, right? It's all about balance. We shouldn't have tension any place that isn't balanced out with tension from our other hand, right? So you're kind of coming out here. Think of, think of it more like if I come out here, if I come out of my holster and I do this, I don't have a dot. I have to bring it up here for me to find my dot. Okay. Right? And when we're moving in a de defensive situation, when we're moving, we're not moving with our hands out here. We're not moving with our hands down here. We're moving like this. Because if I come around a corner and my arms are out, guess what's going to happen to my gun? The guy's there. He's going to grab it. If I come around a corner and there's a bad guy there, pow. Right? And if I don't think there's a threat, then I go to here. Right? The gun's pointed in a safe direction. There's no immediate threat. If there's an immediate threat, I'm here. Press straight out. Okay? And you go, go slow. Really think about it. When I first started having to do this, I had to train myself to come up and actually tap myself on the chest with my hand to get it in the position. I had to literally tap myself to get it to where I could meet it and come out. Get a little bit more aggressive in your stance. Slack it out, press it through. Remember, hold that trigger down. And then let it reset. Good. Magazine out. Back to number one. Take your time. You're, you're taking out the slack, but you're pressing straight through. Take out the slack, then st stop, front sight, then press. Try that. You're taking out the slack and then just pressing it through. Slack it out, hold okay. it, line yep. your sides. There you go. There you go. Good, excellent. Good, get that finger pointed down a little bit, press that in, kind of press it in. Okay, arms a little bit more out in front of you. A little bit more out in front of you, press them out. There you go. Lean way forward. There you go. Slack it out, press it through. Number three. Good, take your time. Let, your, let the dot be in your periphery so you're focused on that center of that part of the target. And remember, we're gonna, when we're gonna put that magazine in, we're gonna do it with force, okay. right? And so if I'm in the middle of a match and I'm changing magazines, here's what it looks like in slow motion. Rotate, right? I go from here to rotate, pow, okay. right? Number three, slack it out, slow, deliberate, take your time, feel the balance. Jerking the trigger. That's my problem. Right. Press it through. Let it surprise you. Just take the slack out. Hold it. Align your. Get your focus on your front sight, and then slowly press it through. the wall so much. Get that thumb down on that thumb. There you go. Look at that. Do it again. Inside. Here's the other thing. This finger's getting in the way of your trigger finger. Oh, okay. There you go. That's gonna create issues. Uh, oh, okay. Right? Yeah. All right, slack it out, do it again. Better. One more time. Make sure that it's centering in here. Yep. Right? You got it nested at the bottom. Right. It could be that your sights need to be adjusted because you're grouping on the left side. That's okay, I'm as long as you're that. consistent. We can always move your sights, right? Yep. Two more. <laughs> There's a oh, tiny the bit of slack. shaky. That's okay. Is it because I'm gripping too hard? Probably. 
you don't have to grip this gun at hard at all. It has no recoil. Slack out. Remember, you're focusing on the target, not the dot. Yep. Okay? Yep. Okay. Remember, follow through, just like in sports or for batting or whatever, we're following through. We pull the trigger, we imagine the round going down range and hitting it, following through, right? Especially with our trigger pull, we push it, let the gun go off, and then we let our finger off the trigger. Excellent. Take your time, breathe, relax. I think that's what I'm doing, I'm holding my breath. Yeah, gotta breathe. Excellent. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we have a 1911 shooter now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there's a difference. Right? <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> the dot, the dot is so, it's so helpful. Yeah, that is nice. So focus on the... Focus on the target, let the dot be in your periphery. Right, you're not really focusing on the dot, you're post focusing on the part of the target you wanna hit. You're just letting that dot come over the top of it. Okay, this gun's gonna have a lot less recoil. It's just gonna feel more comfortable. Trigger's gonna be much lighter, obviously. Uh -huh. So, number four. And I want you to get your thumb here, because that slide reciprocates, right? Mm -hmm. We want to keep our thumb right there. Right. Take your time, lean forward, get aggressive. God. Yeah, just relax. Good. It's nice and relaxed. Breathe. Excellent. Good. All right. Unload it. Now look at that group. A little better. So you. So what's helping you? is you got a light trigger, mm -hmm. you got a heavier gun, right? So the recoil isn't scaring you or affecting you, and you've got a dot. So how were you racking it? Where was your left hand? On these, on this, where's my left hand? I do that. That's why we have Hold serrations. On, do it again. You can do it back here. I do it. Some people even grab the optic and do it, which I don't agree I with. I hold it with my fingers, though. What's wrong with that? Do it here? So, or here? I'm going like this. Well, so I don't want to have my finger anywhere near the port. Okay. Because well, that, that barrel unhinges, see that? Yeah. So I want to have my hand either be in front of it or behind it. So I guess, but you're pinching it like this. I'm, I'm pinching it like this. And I'm like this. Yeah, you can also do that. Is there any benefit? The reason I do this instead of grabbing it back here is that I'm just not, I don't think it's a good idea to start yarding on that optic okay. right and for me that's faster than doing this and coming up there are matches where i have to start with an unloaded gun i have to pick up my mag off the barrel load it and start shooting so that's for me that's the fastest way to do it rather than doing it back here i can pick up my gun put the magazine in my hands right there pow But, so then, I'm not good at just sitting and shooting. <laughs> Sounds like you might have practiced before. Nah. Yeah,
me try my reloads. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, my reloads are working pretty good. Yeah, I'd say so. So this is a good gun. It's a good it's gun. It's gonna work, yeah. This will be a good gun. It'd be you're putting too much finger in the trigger. So if I put too much finger in the trigger and I'm pulling it here. Like literally too much, too much. Yeah, finger. that will pull it to the left. If I put not enough trigger in here or finger in here, it'll actually pull it to the right. So my guess is you got really long fingers. You're probably putting too much finger in on the trigger. Try to be going right in here. All right. All right. Try that. So one thing that um, I started doing a long time ago, um, I wanted to, to bring the gun out of the holster. I wanted to start with the gun here and press it out. So that way, when I get the gun at full extension, I'm squeezing the trigger. It's even more important with, a, with, a, with, an, optics on, with an optic on your gun, right? Because if I draw out here and I bring the gun up, I don't even have a dot half the time. So what I like to do is I like to get my hand back here. And what I started doing to train myself to get my hand back here is actually tap myself on the chest to get that hand up here. And then it also gets it going forward. So as I'm drawing, it gets now that I, I, I'm, I've seen that dot every single time. Again, if I do this, the, the dot's gone. I can't even see it. I got to move it around to find it. But if I bring it up here, it's there every time. You got to bring the gun up here in that position and it just helps to get that and bump your bump your chest and get the gun going forward from this position. So I like to go progressively steeper as I go around my belt and have the mags go from pretty canted here, which is a natural place for me to go, drop my hand on it and pull it out, to if I do have to go back here, it's vertical because my hand's gonna be vertical. So you don't want them all vertical, straight or along here. You want to have them progressively get steeper as you go back. You definitely don't want them forward, and you definitely don't want the magazine in there backwards, because then you have to t grab it and turn the magazine to get it in the gun. So these are just something that you'll see a lot of the top shooters have the same kind of deal going on. Some will start the mag pouches up here if they're an open shooter or whatever, uh, but I like them just to the side where my hand naturally drops. The fundamentals are so important. Like I said, I've been to matches where and, and have shot with people that I shot with for 10 years, right? They never learned the right way to, to hold the gun to do all this stuff. They never got better. They got maybe marginally better over 10 years, right? The key to performance in anything is emulation. Watching somebody who's really good and emulating what they do, right? I can sit here and, touch and tell you how to do it and you're all doing good, but if you want to be really, really good, you want to watch somebody who's great and emulate what they do. And it's so funny, you go to a match and, and it's, it's everybody has the same little weird thing that they do when they move and they reload, it's crazy. But at the higher end level, everybody's doing the same thing. It's just, you know, it's like somebody, you know, digitally put somebody else's face on that guy, right? You know, it's like, it's crazy because we're all emulating each other. We're all trying to do the same thing and hey, you know, that works and in my mind, I'm gonna do what he did, right? Um, so these are the basics. I mean, this is the basics of the grip and all that. You're not gonna master this overnight. Nobody masters this overnight, right? This takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of thought, and it takes a lot of just sitting in front of the couch or sitting in front of the TV on the couch, you know, working on your trigger pull, you know? One thing that I learned um, when I was, you know, wanting to improve a little bit was my reload and how, do, how I thought about how I reload the gun. Well. I don't have big hands, I don't have long thumbs. I cannot hit that mag release when I'm gripping the gun. See that? So what I have to do is, I have to come off the gun, bring my fingers up to the front strap, and I have to turn the gun to get to that button. 
And then when I hit that button, now what do I do? The magazine's coming in. I don't have my grip anymore, right? So what I did was, the guy that, that I had taken his classes, whatever, says, when you hit that button, you regrip the gun. Doesn't matter what this hand's doing, what the magazine's going in, you hit it and you regrip it. And so what I did was I'd sit in front of the TV and I'd hit and I'd regrip. And I'd just sit there for hours, hit and regrip, hit and regrip, hit and regrip. See how my hand regrips it? All the great shooters with guys that have normal sized hands have to do this. You cannot hit that button without hitting and regripping. So that's how you learn it, right? When, when I come in with the magazine, I want to go right back on target, right? So if you want to see what, what, a ma what a magazine ch change looks like, and I'll probably mess it up. Okay. It doesn't hurt when you have a big mag well too, the bottom of your gun. You just gotta get close. The magazine goes right in there. My natural stance is I'm kind of back here. Right. And so that's, for me, learning to lean in. Is well, that's what our body wants to do. I, I see it more with, with ladies because all their strength is in their hips and down, right? So what they do in order to compensate for a heavier gun or having to hold a gun out here is they do this, right? Because we don't use these back, unless you're a kayaker, these muscles that we're using to do all this, shoulder muscles, they really don't get used much, right? Unless you're lifting and working out and all that. So our body wants to compensate for that weight out there, right? But when we're in a position um, and the reason why we want to be aggressive with our stance is if I'm having to move and, and, and there are instances and in matches where I, I'm shooting on the move, I'm trying to be as efficient as I can. So if I have the ability to shoot while I'm moving to get to the next position, whatever, I'm doing that. And so you want to be fluid, you want to be smooth, but you can't, you know, you can't walk normally. You have to walk like a heel to toe. You have to be aggressive, you know, so you're basically... Right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be smooth and fluid and, and that's part of it. It's, 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 it's not instinctual to shoot while you're moving, right? It's not something that our dads teach us how to do. But when you put all these things together and you think about your stance and, and all that, and it's, it all goes hand to hand with what you're doing. And they're, you know, even as a concealed carry holder, if you're not a competitor, there could be a point where you're going to need to be shooting and moving. You definitely want to be moving behind cover, right? We don't want to stand out in the middle of nowhere and engage a threat. We want to be moving towards some, some sort of cover, right? And a moving target's easier or harder to shoot than a, a static target. So all these things are things you can work on at home. That's a beautiful thing about this. It's really hard to get great at shooting targets at long distance at home. We can do it, we can dry fire, and the, the guys that compete all the time, they dry fire a lot. But it's even more important for handgunners to dry fire at home within it, you know, just sit there and work on all that stuff. You know, especially the draw, you know. But this is a, this is a, a, a perishable skill and it requires practice. Yep. And if you're gonna carry a concealed weapon you need to be as proficient as you can, right? Because what we know is that under duress, best case scenario is I'm 80% as good as I am in practice, 80%. That's somebody that shoots all the time like me. If you got a guy that is a beginner and he's under duress, he's in an active shooter environment, he's, he may not even be able to squeeze that trigger off. He may not be able to get all those things working right? So he just doesn't have the muscle memory to get it all to where it's wired in, right? So that's why practicing doing all this on a constant basis is so important if you're going to carry a gun to defend yourself. Any questions? 
Do you see the difference between the iron sights and the dot? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a huge difference. And the difference between, you know, a, a production gun and a custom built gun. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's a huge difference. If you guys like to shoot this, you're more than welcome. It's, it is like driving a Porsche, you know? I mean, it's just like, Ooh. Victor's already bought one. He shot it. He shot mine. He's already bought one. <laughs> I said, hey, Siri, buy me a 9 <laughs>